Welcome back to Common Table. I'm glad we laugh before we start because it just sets the mood. Glad y'all are here. Um, let's just do this. We did it the first week. We didn't really do it the second week. We're going to do a little check-in. The first question off the bat, how goes it with your soul? It's one of my favorite questions because it gets right to the point. Nice icebreaker. Go deep. <laughs> uh, my soul is busy. Okay. I'm excited for church starting back up and having that potential for, oh, we've had all these ideas over the last couple of months. Now we actually get to do them. And then it's like, oh, yeah, we haven't had church in five months. Does it all still work? Uh, so I'm super excited for church going to start back up, but it's just a lot of busyness, kind of like I talked last week. I work on Sundays. So I've got, you know, it looks great on stage, but there's 700 things in the checklist that we go through during the week. So just getting ready for that, but it's exciting. I will tell you, like, this has been the most non-COVID thing I've done since March. Like to have a community group, to be with people and talk about life and not be, you know, my family only um, does good for my soul. So I get a little like, hey, let's have some fun with this and go two hours. No, I'm just kidding. Um, But I really enjoy this. Um, But how goes it with my soul in general? It's related to what you're talking about going through this cycle of, we're going to do it? No, we're not. We're going to go, we're going to do this? No, it's canceled. I mean, that rhythm gets a little frustrating because you prepare for something to happen and then COVID interferes for whatever reason and you have to get reset and come back later. Then it's harder to get prepared again because it might not happen. You've probably experienced that on some level somewhere along the way, right? It's like, oh, we're going to have this meeting. No, we're not, you know, and it's like, why did I spend five hours this week preparing for a meeting that's not going to happen? And when it comes back, I'm not going to prepare. <laughs> I'm just going to show up. And if it happens, great. No, not really. But that's kind of, that's, that's, that rhythm has frustrated my spirit a little bit. How do you get excited? Football. I'm excited. Is it going to happen? And it's the same rhythm. Like the debate is on or it's off or it's, they are having it. They aren't having it. They're changing the schedule. All that stuff makes you go, <sighs> No, maybe not. Yeah. It's hard. Well, that's me. That's where I'm living right now. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm right in line with what everything that's kind of been said so far. I mean, it's, it, it, it's a combination, I think, of, of both of what you all have said. I, for some reason, this has been the busiest week I've had, and I don't know. I, I can't tell you the last time. I mean, it's been that like I just haven't stopped all week long, you know, and it's just been a, you know, it hasn't been a bad week at all. It's just, and it's been stuff that's needed to be done, but it's just been really, really busy. Just continuous, right? Yes. And internally, I'm like, I'm feeling the need to rest. Yeah. My soul is tired. (laughs) I came in and said that. My soul is tired today. It's been a really busy day. Not a bad day. I can't really look at today and be like, all these bad things happen. Hadn't been a bad day. It's just been noisy, stimulating. You know what I mean? Like one of those days, everything was just so busy and I wanted to maybe close it down for a little bit, but there wasn't any opportunity to do that. And so um, not a bad day, just a just a yearning for rest kind of place in my soul. Did you do your homework? You just remembered, didn't you? Oh, you did of it. Of course you did, Parker. <laughs> yeah, because I've listened to it three times by this point. What so. was the homework? <laughs> Parker knows because he watches the edit. I was supposed to write a prayer. That's right. I did not do my homework. That's I'm so right. sorry. Nothing like a little accountability. We talked about that last week, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I said I'd never had an accountability partner. <laughs> <laughs> I failed. And that's why. I failed there it the is. Here's why accountability is important. <laughs> well, I, I got halfway here and I was like, well, yeah, my prayers at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting you to read it. I just wanted to see if, like, did you take that moment? to thank God for the person who poured into you and even beyond that to invite God to bring somebody in your life to pour into was the assignment, just in case you're fuzzy. Um, And it's not, there's no grades, so yeah, 
So well, I didn't figure we were like going to mail it or anything. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing the was camera. in the context of grace anyway. We're not going to be like, oh, you can't come back to common table. <laughs> You're not spiritual enough. I mean, that's, that's not going to happen. But we'll, um, we'll blow it. But if you did any of it, or even if you left it at home, did you, do you have any takeaways from that process? Like, A, either writing a prayer or insight as you were praying. Let's ask it that way for those of us that did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I loved, you know, I kind of, I had to go kind of back through the years and kind of go, you know, when did I meet Michael? I mean, I was a sixth grader. What in the world did Michael see in me as a sixth grader? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was ping pong. We had a ping pong table in the youth group. And I was just playing ping pong. And I was like, hey, Michael, you want to play? He's like, yeah. And he smoked me. <laughs> but Uplift I was, your spirit as I crush you. <laughs> he had this nasty topspin. I was like, I can do nothing with this, but I love it. And that was kind of it was interesting to go back and remember, like, that's what started it. That's what began this journey of him pouring into me through middle school and high school, us, me getting to be a part of launching and planting a church and being a tech leader at 16. Who in the world trusts a 16-year-old to be a tech leader? But Michael did, and I'm grateful. But it all started over ping pong. So. I noticed a trend with mine. Two things. One, I have to, man, when I really want to pray, I do have to write it. So that's part of the reason I said, hey, write a letter prayer or whatever, because, hey, that helps. Um, but there are two trends. One, there are multiple people. And we taught, we shared the one kind of thing. But there were two or three people, and when I kind of wanted to do the reflection thing you're talking about. And then I started thinking about what I remember most about those two or three people or why they were who they were to me. And the trend was... When I was off the rails, one of them was there. <laughs> and I went, this is not good. <laughs> God has had to send multiple people along my life to kind of keep me on track, you know. <laughs> but that was like the, guy, the youth pastor who led me to Christ, literally changed the direction of my life because I was off the rails when I came to Christ in the first place. And then he was kind of there through some stuff through high school. And there was another guy that I thought of that was there and his, his impact literally was, it was the first time I ever really felt connected to a small group and to a church. Um, it was actually Horizon, the church we have in common. It was my small group leader at Horizon. And so um, that was the first time I'd ever, because I was always going to my parents' church before that, or I was going to church just to go to church, but it was our small group leader at that church that I went, okay, now when I come to church on Sunday, I have relationships with other people in this building that I felt connected to. And at the same time, he was still there when I went through a really tight spot in, at that, during that time. So I'm going, okay, there's a theme here. But, it, but what it dawned on me was this pouring into idea that was kind of behind the, high, the homework assignment was, I've never really been alone on my faith journey. And if you think through your story, that's been the case, that God will bring people into your life or out that's pouring into you exactly what you need at the moment that you need it. And I always thought, I thought that was a real, that was a really interesting takeaway for me. It's like, okay, when I really, I was joking about it, but when I needed somebody to kind of like, okay, get back on the, the pathway here, there was somebody there to help. And it wasn't always misbehaving off the rails. It was serious emotional crisis or something that they were like able to come alongside and bring me that way. So that was kind of cool to, to write that out and go, okay. It's not just the one guy who led me to Jesus and taught me how to be a Christian, all of this, that. It's these people that have been like, like bumper pool, you know, like, I'm going to put you back in the middle of the track there. So it's a good practice, and it's a prayer, which we're going to talk about prayer tonight. Let's talk about prayer. That's the plan. Uh, we've been talking about common table having four legs, and we'll go other places once we get past the four legs. But we talked about Bible reading being one leg, and last week we talked about community and the value of being in a relationship like this and accountability and all that kind of stuff why I asked the question on your homework. Got to be true to what we're about. Um, but then prayer is the third leg. And so we're going we're gonna to delve into that. So describe, is a, this is a fun question to lead into too. Describe your prayer life. How's it going? What's it look like? General question. Describe your prayer life. Non-existent. Okay. That has always been my uh, part. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. 
that non-existent sums it up, huh? Okay, fair enough. Appreciate you being being honest that way too. Well, you know, it's kind of a big question there. You know, I'm trying to figure out how to put it, it in is. a nice little quick <laughs> box there. I mean, five minute mini sermon is fine. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, my prayer life really shifted and changed senior year in college, maybe, when I had this Foundations of Christian Ministry class at Mississippi College. And um, we were talking about the book, The Practice of the Presence of God, and just the idea of what was called, he didn't call it back then, but the spurt prayers that you could be anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to be on your knees and it's something crazy could be going on uh, around you, but the Holy Spirit is inside of you. God is with you. You can speak to him and talk to him wherever. So I find myself, I often wonder, hmm, I wonder what, you know, God must be going, whew, yeah, wow. You know, because I'll, I'll even be at work and be like, God, I need your help. I mean, I mean I'll just be, you know, zero to a hundred. So... Uh, I try to stay in a conversation with him throughout the day. Now, and I don't mean that as, oh, super spiritual. No, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm a nut job. I've already said that, right? Means I need a lot of prayers. What that no, means. <laughs> yes. But, like, I, I, I'm God and just talk to him, you know, because if not, I'm just, I'm always trying to keep a check on myself. You know, I may have somebody in front of me, a customer or whatever, and I'm just like, I'm not equipped to deal with this. And, and I'm just talking and talking, you know, in my, in my spirit to him and things. And, and it could be just going, and I, I find myself going back and forth because I can enter into it so quick. I was like, I don't know if I kind of entered in reverently or not. You know, I just kind of started talking like, but that's the way I feel like it should just, that you're that close where, I think our relationship with him is supposed to be like that. We're so close to him where we just can start talking. You know, like, I, I, look, I need, I need you. You know, uh, we're going, I'll get to the praising to you in here in just a second. But, you know, I need, to, I need you right now, right here, you know. So it's, yeah, don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying I'm continually praying 24-7. But my life, it, it can be so chaotic sometimes that, I just, I don't have the time during the day to hit my knees in my office. I just got to talk to him. I just got to talk. So it's more, or my prayer life is more like a, just an ongoing conversation. I may not even see amen, you know? When I was younger, I used to do that, fall asleep. I'd go to pray, I'd pray at the end of the day, like when you lay down in the bed, and I'd fall asleep praying. Probably done that before, and I wake up, and go, Amen. <laughs> like, like whatever I was praying, whatever was, like I was praying all night or something. But then you made me think of that when you said that. Right. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like in the day that way. First thing we went, oh yeah, I need to finish my prayer. I don't know, out of left field. What about you? Um, a very conversational kind of prayers too, kind of throughout the day. But like I found, you know, Parker, like you were saying, non-existent, like. I've kind of struggled to get to this part and like somebody one time, I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not. Have I said that I have a jar that I keep my prayers in, like keep written prayers in? Okay. Well, a couple of years ago, I had somebody who, you know, I can be a real anxious person and I worry about things a lot and stuff. And they were like, Elizabeth, you should write down your prayer and put it away in a jar. And that's kind of like your God jar. And, um, Anyway, the idea sounded fabulous. It sounded like a fun little craft. And so I was like, yes. So I did it and I have this jar and it's got a little tiny hole in it. It's actually like has a, it should have a straw. It's like a cup, you know, it's straw. But anyway, I duct taped it around because the idea was when you give your prayer, you can't take it back. You know, like you've, you've let it go and over to God. And so anyway, um, I did that. And that jar sat on my bedside for about five months empty. Now, that doesn't mean five months I didn't worry. It meant I realized from that activity, I mean, it, the, the point wasn't for me to realize this, but, well, it kind of was, but they didn't think that, um, 
it would take me that long, but it was just like one day, it just occurred to me, I looked at my jar and I had little pieces of paper right next to it and I had a pencil right next to it. I mean, you know, like it was there, always waiting for me. But I think every time something came up, it was like, I got this, I got this. Like, you know, I mean, I was very like, I, I don't need help with this one, I got it. And so anyway, I ended up having to like make myself write stuff down on the pieces of paper and stick it in my jar. And it helped me get that conversation going. You know, like something, seeing that physically absent, like actually seeing it being um, empty, and make me realize, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've had five months of worries that I haven't even yeah. tried to give over. You've got, a, you've got a shining example going, this is how much you're praying, staring you in the face. It was You were a, talking about no accountability. I'm like, here's your accountability <laughs> jar. <Yeah. You> know? <laughs> it was pretty, and it is full now. But I will say what it helped me do was then jumpstart. Like the more I got practice of just writing those things down, and my little pieces of paper are super small so I can um, roll them up and stick them in the little straw hole. So they're super small. So it's not like these elaborate prayers. But it just kind of kick-started my conversations. And now, um, you know, a lot of times I don't use my God jar, but then every once in a while I'm like, i got to go sit down and write something for my God jar. Mine is wonderfully inconsistent. How's that for a phrase? Like, there was a point in my spiritual walk, and we may have talked about this when we were reading, when I was reading the Bible, where, I went, where somebody finally gave me the grace of life to go, if you don't do it every day, you're not going to hell. You know what I mean? Like, once that really sunk into who I was, it applied to prayer, too. Like, a jar empty for five months. I mean, like, Jesus still loves you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to... And I was like, okay, so when I need to pray, I will. But beyond that, when I say wonderfully inconsistent, it's because it's not like I sit down every day and here's my prayer time. It's more like I'll do a certain kind of prayer at a certain time, or I'll do this different prayer at a different time. Like... I'll do a sentence prayer here. We'll talk about that later. I'll do sentence prayer here. I'll do journal here. I'll do some prayer with friends here. Like it's all over the map in terms of the form and the style. And there is the conversational like, you know, oh, I really do need help with this. Those, those prayers happen. So it's like, it's wonderful because it's like, I'll, take, I'll do this one right now. It's an anti-burnout system. <laughs> you know, it's not that I'm super spiritual either, or pray even, even consistently. That's why I say wonderfully inconsistent, because it might be five days between one of these little spurts of creativity, but hey, it may be I spend 20 minutes this morning praying for my family one week, and it might be under my breath as I go through my day the next, the next week, and it may be you know, writing prayers. The ne it's, it's all over the place, and it's not consistent. And sometimes there's gaps like that, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's some days where it's like, all I've done today is keep myself afloat by praying. You know, <laughs> it just, it depends. And, but the release of, I'm not a good Christian if I don't, yeah. sets me up for, well, I'm going to do this. And God and I are going to have some time. Or, you know, like when I was writing the prayer about influence, right? Um, I write prayers a lot because that's how I focus but even though I was thinking about people who poured into me, part of it was who are you going to pour into? And we joked last week, well, if you've got kids, that's kind of an easy answer, you know. But I was overwhelmingly convicted about the fact that I don't pray for my son Matthew near enough. The weight of that hit me. Like, I've got all these prayer things that I do, and I'm a pastor, I pray for people or whatever. And I'm like, I don't spend near enough time praying for Matthew. Confess that on camera. You know what I mean? Like, I pray for him. Some days more than others, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't pray for him like, I started thinking about what, there was some weight to that thought, like what would it change if I did more or more consistent? So, I mean, so I'm like, yeah, I'm praying for my stuff or I'm praying for church people's stuff. And I, of course I pray for my family, but I was like, you know, okay, I think the Holy Spirit's teaching me something else through this whole little exercise that we did but I was poured into, it's time to start, you know, dumping big time. Now, I pour myself into Matthew. I've got pictures of him, both of us, you know, sitting the same way, playing video games. But, I mean, but praying for him, yeah. pouring into him that way it needs to happen. So, wonderfully inconsistent, but I need some more consistency, especially in certain ways or certain areas. But back to what you were saying, and you alluded to this, didn't it just make you on the inside just go like, <sighs> when you realized... 
oh, I'm not going to the old fiery pit, you know, my drop in the mall. And, and when you realize that, oh, God, there is so much grace, and he loves just as I am, and you don't have to, you know, it's not a... Um, the problem is when we define this is what a prayer is, the right words for 30 minutes every morning, otherwise you're not a good Christian. Right. You know what I mean? Culturally, we kind of do that. Same thing, and, we, and I think COVID has done a lot to break some of that. Because if you define your church experience around going to church on Sunday morning, and that's the definition, then you haven't been very spiritual for the last five months. And so it's just the, the, that philosophical spiritual freedom is there, but the disruption of what's happened has also forces us to go, I need to rethink how I do church and worship and prayer and Bible reading. That was really the genesis of this, this whole study. It was like, you can't go to the building and have somebody else spoon feed you. You are, but you are also free to do it like you've never done it before, which is what I like about what you're saying. It's like, there's no such thing as you have to do this prayer. Pray. Talk to him on the fly at work. Talk to him until you fall asleep at night. Like, the boundaries are off. And literally, the physical building boundaries are off right now. You know? And so there's this opportunity to do stuff you've never, like you've never done before. And what that tells you is what you're saying. There is no way. It's a conversation with God. You, you guys were all kind of saying that. We're having this ongoing dialogue. You can have a conversation with God anytime, not just on Sunday. You know, we used to do a Saturday night church worship service at a church I was at, and it was like, God, now available on Saturday. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he is available beyond Sunday morning, <laughs> you know? Um, and we're forced right, that way right now. And even if we're going back to limited church, we're not seeing every, like there's all, everything, the way we do church has been changed in the last six months. What do we do? Online, you know, in person, but safely distanced. Like everything is, the script is broken and it's this wonderful release to go, I'm going to pray different today. Or I'm going to worship different today. People in the car, the stoplight are going to think I'm weird because I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Rocking it out because <laughs> I can't do it in a sanctuary, you know, whatever. The boundaries are off. Um, and so we've got to think differently about it. So, but there is some instruction on prayer in the scriptures, having said all of that. Um, ironically enough, we're going to read the Lord's Prayer in a minute. <laughs> and Jesus says, pray this way. <laughs> so he just contradicts everything I said in a different way. But anyway, um, Matthew 6, this is verses 5 through 13. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by other people. Truly, I tell you, they have already received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty, keep up empty phrases, as the Gentiles do. They think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for their father knows what you, your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then this way. So Jesus does give us a script, Charlie. Um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we are... We are as we also have forgiven our debtors. See, when you memorize it and you read a different translation, it's hard to read. And we have also forgiven our debtors. It's an inside joke here too. And do not bring us to this time of trial for rescue us, but rescue us from the evil one. Okay, that's a different translation. That's of the, a very different translation. It's NRSV <laughs> if you're following along at home or something, but a little different choice of words. Debts, we're used to trespasses. Um, trials, temptations is another translation of that word. But anyway, so verse 5. You may not have picked that up from when I read it, but what does this whole part that I just read about prayer, what does it reveal about our hearts, the role of our hearts in prayer? I think you're supposed to have, like, a humble heart. That's yeah, the I word so. I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. And just an intimate connection with God, not false, like, you know, I don't know, like... Um, the, the, that coming to God in prayer is about coming to God in prayer and not necessarily coming to the public, you know. Um, we talked a couple weeks ago about prayer being hard, right? 
We talked about public prayer being hard, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Don't call on me. My mom was a really private, well, she was not a private person. She was a incredibly public person. So if anybody's seeing this who knows my mom would laugh that I just said that. But religiously, she was a very private person. And I can remember her so many times saying, you know, Elizabeth, we do not stand on the rooftops. Like, <laughs> you know, keep it, keep it private, keep it private. She was very, when it came to her religion and her feelings with God was very like, do it between you and God. That could be why I have a talk time with public prayer now though <laughs> it, it will talk about that because like public prayer is like you're not gonna if you're all you do is talk to God personally and what we were all talking about it's like this, this is what I need help with God it's not like you want to go to public and go okay this is what I need help with God you know <laughs> so it's a very different prayer to go stand in front of people and pray um, do the pastoral prayer on Sunday it's like I can't go up there and confess everything you know, that's not how, but that's what I do in prayer. So what do I do with prayer? So it's awkward, but you're right. I mean, there is there's a humility of spirit involved. What, what I think is interesting is like, when it comes to prayer, is this idea of trying to align our hearts with God's heart as a, as a goal for prayer. So a lot of times my prayers are, whatever your will is, I will do it kind of thing. Or, you know, because... The wish list, genie God prayers, like, I need this, I need this, I need this. Oh, and I need this. You know what I mean? Like, that can be a lot of our prayer. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, he says, bring those to him. But if that's all it is, then it, it reveals some things about where our heart is when it comes to prayer. Does that make sense? If, if your prayer is always, oh, no, I'm going to die, or if your prayer is always, always, I need my Christmas list because I've been a good boy. That reveals some things about where your heart is. My prayers in the morning, it helps now that I, now that I kind of do this. I do typically have um, some routine kind of prayers. Um, I do much better in the morning than I do at night. But one of them is that I can accept that will be done, you know, and, and be open to that and to see that throughout the day, you know. And going ahead and saying that out loud kind of takes some worry off of myself, but then it also makes me be aware that like things are going to happen during the day that are, that you're, are, you're verbally not my putting will. it in the jar. I'm verbally putting it in the jar. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. It's out there. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. I love, um, one of the things we did earlier in the season was, um, breath prayers. Jake talks about breath prayers, and I had never heard of breath prayers, but I love that it also gives me a chance to calm down myself. Like if the world got crazy all of a sudden, just breathe in, breathe out, and that, and that can be a prayer. That can be the, you know, breathe in the love of God, peace of God, breathe out your worries. That's helped me a lot in the season of constant change and... <laughs> Did, it, did everything hooked up the proper way for Sunday? <laughs> Is it? And, you know, are we going to have church on Sunday? Are we going to go back to school? Are we going to, you know, how's all this work? And so that's been really helpful for me. Absolutely. You're way ahead of the game on homework with the breath prayer. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, so what about, what, about, what about words or what you pray? I mean, we talk about this fumbling in public, right? But Jesus has some things to say about words in the passage that I read. Do you ever struggle with putting your prayers into words and feel like this pressure to have a spiritual language or like, I don't know what to say, which is more the public thing. Like, what's the next phrase I'm going to actually say? But like, where are you with like word, wording your prayers, I guess, is the way to say Or what did Jesus even say about that? Because he had something to say in there, which I thought was interesting. I worry about that a lot more when I'm praying in front of people. Okay, I mean, yeah. by myself, I don't really, <laughs> you know, I'll kind of laugh at myself, in, I mean, in some ways, if I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, if I'm praying with someone else or in public, then I'm so much more conscious about, like, what I'm trying to say. And I'll kind of think while I'm praying, like, oh, did I just say that? Oh, man, that's not what I was meaning. Or I'll start thinking about other things. And I don't do that as much when I pray just by myself, you know, um, yeah. You know, when I, in my head, okay, this is Will, just know for nobody else, right? <laughs> but when I, 
try to cultivate that conversation of prayer. And I find that I find myself in the mornings, even it could be when I'm driving, and it's just me in the vehicle or whatever, to lean into the hallowed be your name part. You know, to really start out with the reverence and, you know, your name is glory to your name, Father. It's, you know, just the praise and stuff and just setting that up in knowing that, okay, throughout the day, I don't have hair, but my hair is going to feel like it's going to on fire at times. So, you know, <laughs> there might be times where I'm just like, you know, oh, God, I got to have it. You know, I, you know, it's just, uh, for me, it's like a progression, if you will. You know, and I'll start out in the morning with gratitude and praise and thanks of who he is and how big he is. And I know you got this, God. I know you got it. And uh, I'm saying it now. Um, a little bit coming a little bit later, I'm probably gonna, you know, be coming at you like a speed train, you know. So especially when somebody cuts you off in traffic while you're praying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. And well, it's funny. I'm in a spiritual place, <laughs> uh, or just you know, I'm in my car driving or whatever. This happened this morning. I was praying, and and then I find myself just randomly saying something, you know, in my head. And I'm like, that's not what I meant to say, God. I'm like, what am I, what was I just saying? You know, your, your thoughts begin, you get distracted and your thoughts begin to stray a little bit. And you're like, sorry about that, God. You know, but God gives us his grace in that moment, you know. And it's just, you know, he's got to just look down and laugh sometimes and be like, man, you're all, I love you. You're my child and I, I got it. I got it. Just... Take a deep breath, you know. There, there's some reassurance in verse 8, right, um, for what you just said. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. So even if you can't articulate it, he already knows what you need. But in verse 7, he's like, don't try to fill your prayer up with a bunch of spiritual language just to try to get heard. In other words, the words don't matter. Um, you could argue not even in public. They don't matter. <laughs> I mean, we get a little more feedback when we do it in public like that, but... It, this thee and thou holier than I've got to get it right or the right order or the right form or as kind of was saying earlier, there's some freedom in there. And he's like, don't worry about all that in verse seven. Just talk to him. In fact, because it immediately follows, don't even try to be like the pomp and circumstance on the corner, on the rooftop, right? Because God already knows what you're going to ask for. And I don't always come to God with a humble heart. Sometimes I'm angry. You know what I mean? Like, so, and I think, I think, uh, God is, is big enough to take that. But I just, I was sitting here thinking as we were talking, I was thinking, how do I do? And I was like, sometimes my prayers are angry. And it's, and that's some of that conversation coming out that I need to have, you know. Um, so it, it's not always this humble self, but a, I don't know, it's still probably humble, but you know what I mean? Like It's at least transparent, right? I was about to say, yeah. Because if you're not, even if you're not being humble, like you're angry, not humble, but you can, if you're being real with him, Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, I, I have a range of emotions that I show in my prayers. And, um, yeah. One, one of my favorite things is Psalm, I think it's Psalm 139. And David's given this, like, flowery prayer to God, like, search me, like, you know, like all, it's a famous psalm. I don't, I'm not going to quote it right now. But he's just, like, praising God and talking to God. And, and then right in the middle of it. Why haven't you killed my enemies yet? Like, brrr, search me, oh God, and know if there's any clean thing in me. Like, like it's, it has this, like, God, 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 God. Oh, search my heart, oh God, and see if there's anything inside of me. In other words, almost like he's reacting to himself going, check whatever just came out. You know what I mean? But it sounds like our prayers. We can start with, hallelujah. By the way, I'm angry about this, but I love you anyway. You know, it's the same rhythm. And I love this. That is in the psalm right there where you can see David going, I love Jesus. I love God. Praise God. I really wish you'd take Saul out. He's trying to kill me. But check my heart out. It's all good. You know, <laughs> it's one of those. And I just kind of go, if the psalmist can pray like that, then I can certainly pray like that. Which is another one of those moments where you go, oh. I can be mad, frustrated, depressed, angry, nervous about all the stuff that's going on around us, and God can handle. That's right. That's the beauty of it. You know, I mean, verse 80 goes, he already knows what you're going to ask him, just ask anyway. 
Which kind of begs the question, if God knows what we're going to ask, why pray? If he already knows before you ask him, why do we pray? My children know I love them, but I say it to them all the time. All right, sure. That is so much more profound than what I was about to say. (laughs) (laughs) But you did the assignment. (laughs) (laughs) I did the homework. Now we're even. No. That's good. But the expression part of it is important, right? I think there's something about recognizing it in yourself. Okay. Like, yeah, God knows what I need tomorrow. But there is some part of me bringing it before God. In giving that up, profound too. Well, and it's uh, go along. It's uh, what you both said too. And the way I the way I see it is, I mean, it's a relationship. And when you have a relationship with somebody, you talk to that person, and that person may may know you. They may be able to read you, and and know you're struggling with something or whatever. But having that conversation, and of course, we know God is on a whole nother level. He knows every fiber of our being. But it's just cultivating that relationship. Um, Are you familiar or any of you familiar? He's dead now. Um, But he was a pastor by the name of Dave Busby. Did you ever hear much of Dave Busby? So he preached this sermon called Intimacy with God. And it was the Exodus 33 passage where Moses talks to God face to face. And I'll never forget what he said. It was so freeing to me. And he was like, you know, you, like a child, you can crawl up in the lap of God and beat the breast of your father. He's big enough for you just to beat his breast. And just, you know, why God? Why? You know, God is big enough for why? God is big enough for our anger, for our disappointment, for our anxiety, like you were saying, and depression. It is literally a... And he defied intimacy with God as into me see. It, it's that, you know, into me see, you know, you see it anyway, but I'm inviting you in and I'm just beating your breast right now, sitting on you. And sometimes it's you crawl in his lap and, and you, he, you're just loving on him and you're praising. And, and, but then there's times in your life where you were just, like you were saying, David, was that? you know, it's like machine gun prayer going at it and when he said that I was like oh man that's just so right you know that it clicked with me because I got that middle image of a child and and in the lap of a father and sometimes you know we've all seen it and if we have kids we've experienced crying and but why you know or hurting or whatever and you're beating on your chest or you know just moving around and you're just hugging them and holding them real real tight I think when we're growing up and we're in, if you grew, especially if you grow up in church, this really was couched toward that direction, but if you grow up in church, your parents are wanting you to act a certain way in church. Or if, you're, if they're teaching you about this stuff, this is the way you do this that's honoring and respectful to God or whatever. And I think sometimes we reinterpret that to mean that's how it has to be. And the freedom of, I got to let this go or, you know, what are, Gets, we get robbed of that because we think we have to use thee and thou and we have to follow this script and this is how you pray, just like how you worship is in a building with music. I mean, we have these scripts that have been embedded in us, right? And the passages and even Jesus' teaching and our own experience tells us there's way more to it than that. And if we really know God, we know he can handle the wailing, you know? Um, in fact, he, and you were saying, like, we want to express it. That's, that's kind of what your answer is like. I think we should tell him. I think God's going, I think you should too. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Please tell me exactly. Uh, in fact, when I ask that question, I'm thinking, what this reveals, and even in your an- a combination of your answers, is this. And that is prayer does way more to us or to change us than it does God. So it's not bring the list because he needs to hear the list because he doesn't know. Because he does but it's the act of bringing the list that does something to us. You know, when we talk about common, the, the legs of the common table and scripture changes us, we read it and it changes, we read it and go, oh, that's how messed up I am. Ugh. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what it is. So it shapes us because we read it. 
And we were talking about last week about how com- being in community can shape who we are. Our conversations, our relationships with each other, accountability changes our spiritual walk. We learn something about God we wouldn't learn without that. Prayer is the same thing. We don't pray because it's some all-powerful force, right, that we can influence God. And I'm not saying we can't, but that's not the purpose. It's what being humble, being transparent, the submission that happens when we lay our request at his feet, that, ha- that does something to us spiritually. You know, you're talking about your, your jar example is a perfect example. It's empty because I got this, right? That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Once you put it in the jar and you let it go, there's that tangible action of surrender that goes, I'm letting God have this. That does something in your spirit, it shapes who you are spiritually to go, I'm pretty sure I got this, but is this really what you want me to do? It's still an expression of humility, you know? Like, I know how to preach, but what do you want me to say? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, you've given me this skill set, but am I using it the way you want is a submission action. And so prayer changes us more than it changes God. It just really does. He already knows what you're going to say. You might as well say it. it, says that we just need to be saying it. And on Inconsistently, the, all over the place, <laughs> however you do it, the action of saying it shapes your heart. Yes. Uh, and a lot of times my prayer reveals, reveal that I, I pray for myself too much. And I'm like, wow, I haven't spent a lot of time praying for so-and-so today. I know about this going on in this person's life, you know, or, you know, I, it's, I need to be more focus to praying for others you know it's yeah it change prayer changes you <laughs> that's one of the beauties of like writing prayers for a long period of time over time is you go if you ever go back and read them it's kind of painful because <laughs> you're like me 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 you know like that's all i'm praying about is me you know it reveals stuff like that like that's what i was dealing with back that's what i was thinking back then um, but you can also see what you were praying for. I really wanted that. What was I thinking? You know, it's an interesting little spiritual journey of itself to go, man, I was stupid 10 years ago writing that one. You know, <laughs> like, what was I thinking? Um, it just did. Yeah, but, but if it's all, this is what I need. This is what I want. Why haven't you done this for me? Where's the prayer for this person? Where's the prayer for this? Where's just the glorify God? You were talking about that earlier. Like, where's just the praise to God or the thanks or the thanksgiving for the other 20 pages of prayers that were answered? When you go back and read it and go, oh, he did that. Oh, he did that. Why didn't I ever say thank you? (laughs) You know, it's revealing, you know. Lord, I sure am selfish. (laughs) Gee, I really am a selfish sinner in need of a savior. You know what I mean? Like, it. Yeah, it's one of the beauties of that. That's why I like to write them for focus and for review is a cool thing. But it can be almost a therapeutic experience to go back and read your own old prayers like, I need to burn this when I'm done reading this one. You know? <laughs> Nobody needs to know I was this bad a sinner. You know? uh, don't read this in my funeral. Yeah, that would not be good. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's going bye bye. Um, so the, half the passage was the Lord's prayer, and Jesus does say this is how how you should pray. But that doesn't mean, and some people can wrongly interpret that to mean the only prayer that works is the Lord's prayer. That's not what he's saying. You know, all the prayers we've been talking about are not the Lord's prayer. So that, does God hear them? Absolutely. So what, what purposes for prayer are revealed in the phrasing of the Lord's Prayer? Because that's really what he's given us as a structure, right? So each line, you know, <laughs> I can't even do it now. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, right? That's something. Um, give us this day our daily bread is revealing something he wants us to pray for. Like, what are the purposes of prayer based on the way he told us to pray? Like the different forms that we just well, like, what do you the the maybe not like? What I'll achieve the example. Give us this day our daily bread. What's that a prayer for? Let me ask it that way. It's things that we need mm-hmm. today. Right. Sus- mm-hmm. Sustain provision, us today. Right? That's We're right. praying for God's provision. We're asking Him to sustain us. I mean, Matthew was actually asking me about the bread part the other day, and I'm like, and I had to because I had to tell him I was like, 
that's a, that's a picture of everything that God gives us that carries us. That's not the way I put it to a five-year-old, but, you know, like he was asking, why just bread? It's like, you know, <laughs> that's a metaphor. Not that, a, you know, Matthew might be able to figure it out. But that's, that means like anything that you need from God. So there's other phrases. If you don't know the Lord's Prayer, I can read it again. Um, but like, what do you think Jesus is trying to tell us needs to be the focuses of our prayer? Maybe I could ask it that way. Using the daily bread as an example. I think it's, you know, the forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We can't just ask God for forgiveness. It has to be a two. We also have to forgive others. I know that's a softball one. But, um, you know, I, it's disingenuous. I don't think it's the right word. But it's the word I'm going to use for us to, you know, God, forgive me for all the things I did. And I still have a grudge against Will. Like, <laughs> right. But crush him. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I'm going to go before God to ask for these things, for forgiveness especially, I need to look at myself too. What am I still holding on to? So forgiveness and forgiving others is definitely a purpose of prayer, for sure. I mean, he's given us a little structure. You know, If you go hunting through scripture for prayers... They're, do, they're praying for certain reasons, for certain things in certain circumstances. And Jesus says, because the disciples ask him in a different gospel, how do we pray? And he goes, this is how you pray. Right? We know we ask for provision. That's one. Ask for forgiveness. Definitely one. This whole group, we need to ask for that one. Right? The first one is, I tried to do it a minute ago from memory and was stumbling, but our Father art in heaven. Glorify, his, glorify your name. The second part is kind of a key one. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's he asking us to ask for? I love this part of the prayer, actually. What's he asking us to ask for? That the purpose of his purposes That's are, right. are done. Where? This here is on here. earth. Not go to heaven someday and then God's will will be accomplished. But for here. his will to be done here. Mm-hmm. You said it earlier, not my will, your will, right? That's, part, that's an aspect of the Lord's Prayer. That, it goes back to the humility thing again, too. Your will be done, not mine. And here now, not later, <laughs> right? Or someday when I go to be with you in heaven, you know. Accomplish your will the way it's being done where everything is perfect here. That's another way to phrase that. It's really interesting. And then there's probably one more. Um, there's forgiveness of sin, and there's another phrase behind that. That's right. Keep us out of sin. Forgive us for the ones we commit, but empower us to avoid sin. He's, Jesus is telling us to ask God to help us stay out of sin. Maybe if we're struggling in the phrase before and confessing a lot, we need to pray the next one a lot more often. <laughs> I think we, we're so busy, this is, what I, this is what I need and this is what's wrong, what I've done wrong, that we forget that he wants us to ask for his help to not go down that road. Whew. Wait, wait. If I ask you to help me not to sin, you'll hear my prayer and honor that? Cool. <laughs> Maybe I need to pray that one a little more often. <laughs> you know what I mean? Me, me, me. Uh, help me not to screw up again. Yes. You know what I mean? Help me not to revisit the one I just confessed. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. It's one of those, it's, it's empowerment. He's ask, we're asking for spiritual help to walk in our daily life. Which means he wants to help us not sin. Which is really cool. Because most of us are going, we got to confess because we did it again. You know, there's those, those sins that keep chasing you. And it's like, do it again. I got to confess it again. Maybe I need the other half of that phrase. Lead me not into the temptation to even do that again. It needs to be some prayer focus for a season. If I'm hitting this prayer, this same sin over and over again and I'm going to confess it, maybe I need to focus on the help me stay out of it. It's really cool. Um, and then the first part and then the end is to prayer is to glorify God. You said it earlier, you know. I'm going to lay down some praise prayers for a little while, right? I'm just going to glorify God, and that's prayer, which also takes the focus off me, <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's given us a template 
It doesn't mean you're not praying if you don't do any one of these, because that would be legalistic. But if you're looking for something to pray for, here's four or five categories that you can pray in and ways to pray that will help you in your spiritual walk. Um, so I wanna, I wanna, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up by giving you, doing some practical. And You touched on it earlier. You got ahead of me. It's cool. Um, but we, we, want, we can't come to church where somebody else is doing that awkward pastoral prayer for us. Um, <laughs> so we need to be praying on our own. And so there's a couple of different practical things. We've talked about some of them. Writing prayers. Yeah, buddy. Writing them out for all the reasons I was talking about earlier, but the discipline of just journaling prayer. I mean, mine started with this much paper and ended up with like, oh, still praying, you know. Like, that practice is a practical one, especially if you have a hard time with focus. You know what I mean? If, if you're like, squirrel, it, write it down, come back to the writing, it's a good thing. Um, sentence prayers, let's delve into that for just a minute. Breath prayers is what you called it, same thing. Um, and we do them all the time. We were talking about these earlier. <laughs> you know, but breath prayer is a discipline you can practice or a sentence prayer. And they're literally exactly like it sounds, a one sentence prayer. Um, there's examples in scripture. Um, there's examples people have done before. You gave an example one a little while ago. It was something like breathe in something and breathe out the other. What was it what you said? Uh, breathe in the peace of God and breathe out your worries. That could be a sentence prayer. Like, God, I'm breathing in your peace. I'm breathing out what I don't need. You know, anything, it, in other words, I do that a lot. There's no script. Um, some examples are like, I wrote some down just so in case I blocked. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Which is like the tax collector's prayer in Luke 18, I think. Just have mercy on me, a sinner. You don't even have to get specific. Driving in the car, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. <laughs> you know, um, Lord, help me, and then finish that sentence, <laughs> right? Help me get through this conversation. Help me get through this situation. Help me get through whatever. Lord, help me fill in the blank. That's a sentence prayer. Um, not my will, but yours. You said that one, I think. Um, Jesus says that in Gethsemane, right? Take this cup from me, but not my will. Your will be done, you know? Uh, that's in the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Each of those phrases from the Lord's Prayer could be a sentence prayer. God, give me my daily bread today. Boom. Now, here's where it becomes a discipline. This is really cool. The challenge would be, homework, hint, hint, pick a sentence prayer and repeat it over time. So, mercy on me, a sinner, whatever fits your, where you are in your spiritual walk. Um, they call them breath prayers because some of them are that short. Like you can say it in a breath. Um, if your sentences are longer, that's okay. But the idea is it can give you a prayer focus for a day or a week. So let's just say if it's, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. If that's my chosen prayer for the week, then I'm going to be like asking God's forgiveness repeatedly all week. And when something comes to mind that I know I just did wrong, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. <laughs> you know, I don't have to go fumbling for words. I don't have to spend a bunch of time. I don't have to find a pad and a pen. You can just do it. Uh, my personal favorite is called the prayer of indifference. Now, if you're familiar with this one, I know it sounds weird. Why would you pray something if you're indifferent? But it's spiritual indifference. And it, so it sounds like this. Um, where, is it? where is it? Oh, and it's similar to I want your will. I, Lord, I want your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. And that's a little bit longer sentence prayer. But Lord, I want your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's, and it's called the prayer of indifference because the idea behind it is to take yourself out, out of the control picture. It, I'm indifferent to what you're wanting to accomplish. It's a different word for indifference. It's a different meaning of indifference than we think. Like, I don't care. It is I'm, my, I'm laying aside my passions. I'm laying aside my agenda. I'm being indifferent and allowing your will. Um, it's a great, I need to make a major decision prayer. So you're about to sit down about a job opportunity or a major challenge or final exam or whatever, whatever the, the big thing you've got to weigh over and decide, Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. And you've just kind of said, it's the spiritual humility we talked about. It's the surrender idea. It's like my favorite. I pray it a lot. I like that. Especially when I've got like, what do I do? Anxiety. 
Whatever it is, your will, nothing more or less else or anything else. In the, no agenda from me, no passion from me, just you, which I love it. Um, if you struggle with how to pray, which some people do, like what to say. Um, I use this in my public prayer sometimes. <laughs> um, praying scripture is a trick you can work on too. So like if you just struggle with what does praying even sound like or look like, go to the Psalms and read those prayers. Uh, there's even a book of... Um, book of prayers written by people over the centuries. So like people who prayed four, 500 years ago, you can go read their prayers as prayer. And you know, we, we do it. We pray together. We're echoing each other's prayer anyway. It's the same thing. Some people think praying somebody's prayer is like artificial. If you're listening to me pray and agreeing with me and saying amen, it's the same thing. My dad used to, I know I've mentioned him before, but um, he, when things would happen in our family, sometimes just things that maybe dad needed to come in my room and just take some take a moment or so to talk to me. He would bring his Bible and read uh, Psalms 121. And uh, there were probably other things that could have been said in a prayer, but it was just like, we're just going to take this time. And I don't know what words to say at this point, you know, like whatever was going on. I think really now, like being older, look at it of, of just kind of going, but I know I want to come in here and us say a prayer. So therefore, we're always going to read this scripture. And we read that scripture all the time. And that's kind of one of my sentence prayers, the start of it from where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Yeah. You're saying the word of God back to God. Yeah. So you're getting a double shape. You're surrendering and praying and you're reading scripture. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're getting a double influence there. But what you'll do, if you do that over time as a discipline, and I'm, you know, the discipline thing is key. If you're doing this over time, guess what words you're going to start to use as you pray? You're going to use phrases that you've repeated over and over again. So the one you you know the the first verse one twenty one is just going to flow into your prayers naturally, you know. And so if you just don't, I don't know, I don't know what to pray. Open the Psalms and just start reading and saying, God, this is my prayer. You're praying. It's no more complicated than that. Um, and He can shape that. So that's like three practical things: breath prayers, whatever sentence you want to make up, write them if you struggle with focus. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? Um, and then if you don't know what to pray, read Scripture because it'll teach you how to pray. Um, and then, the, then, of course, the Lord's Prayer gives you some, like, areas to focus on, especially if you need to shift your focus a little bit um, that way. So let's close in prayer. Um, we're going to do this in a guided way real quick. We've been talking about how private prayer is and how personal prayer is. Now we're going to pray out loud on camera for the whole <laughs> Internet to see. Um, but, I, but I'm going to make it very easy because the guided prayers are one-word prayers. So this is not e hard either. All right, um, so we're gonna, here's how this is going to work. The first one is say one word of something you are thankful for. See? Easy. Um, and then one word for something that you need right now. That's it. So we'll do thankful first, then need, and then I'll close us. All right? See, that's not so hard. All right. Just tell God exactly what it is you're thankful for. Family. Friends. Provision. Family. Just one word expression of something you need from God right now. Direction. Patience. Discernment. Peace. God, we sit here before you to glorify you because that's why we pray. To say that it is you and it's not about us. To lay these requests before you. To give you thanks. To ask for provision. But we most of all want to see your will accomplished in our life. Lord, help us to be more disciplined in prayer. Help us to be more consistent. Help us to be more naturally in conversation with you all the time. You've told us to pray without ceasing, and that sounds so weird and so complex. But our very breath can express a thought or a prayer to you. 
It doesn't have to be full of words. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just us with you. Sink that truth into our hearts. That what we're thinking, what we're saying, where we're going, whenever we sit down, whenever we stand up, wherever we are going, we can be talking to you. God, I express thanks for that. That you've made it possible for us to have such a relationship with you that no matter where we are or what emotion we're experiencing or just what we need, even one word, we can cry out to you and you will be faithful to hear us. For that, we give you praise. For that, we glorify you because you have accomplished that, not us. And so, God, as we pray and as we talk to you on an ongoing basis, we pray that our prayers would shape us to be the person you have called us to be. In your precious son's name, amen.